Hopefully this isn't broken. I swear to God, if it is, I'm gonna be mad. But it looks like the wings are glued in just fine, so maybe I don't have much to worry about. Okay. Oh, come on. Are you got you got to be kidding me? What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today. And yes, um I got more models. <laughs> about two or so weeks, about two and a half weeks after I filmed the last massive unboxing video, I decided to order more models because why not? Um no, I can't I can't help but collect models frequently. All right, so after a uh, couple minutes of ripping the packaging tape off, I did get it open. Got rid of the order form as well. So I'll remove the, the uh, paper, and there we go. You can already see some of the models sticking out. And oh, wow, there's some good ones in here. So here's our first one. This is a Spirit Airlines Airbus A319 in the gray scale. So this is a standard Aero Classics box. I'll get you an uh, up-close view of the box. This one's here is a pretty good one. This is an old release, um, a U.S. Airways Airbus A319. This is the Piedmont Retro. Uh, JetBlue Airbus A321neo. The United Express Embraer ERJ-175. United Express Bombardier CRJ-200. This is the battleship grade because the one with the Continental Globe is so rare to find and very expensive. Alright, so we'll move ahead. We'll go ahead and um, move up to the filming studio. We'll get started with the unboxing. Oh yeah, one more thing too. Just like with the massive unboxing I did a, few, a couple weeks ago, the Clorox wipes will come into use as I wipe them down to try to get rid of any possible germs that might be on the boxes. And then we'll get started. Well, this is, I think, my first time filming in my little studio area during the daytime, so that's why the red blanket in the background looks much brighter. I still have the lights on, but anyways, uh, our first model out of the batch to unbox is the United Express Bombardier CRJ200. This is the Battleship Gray release rather than the Continental Globe because, like I said, the uh, Continental Globe, I think it's pretty hard to find, pretty rare, and very expensive when you do. Open it up and we got the model inside. There's the pamphlet with all the aircraft information. Move to the back, a 2017 release, relatively new. I do like the Battleship Gray, it looks kind of lighter. The gray looks much lighter than normal, but I guess it does have a nice realistic look in our in our day today, just because the Battleship Gray livery is pretty old by this point. So we'll get started. If I can find a... Um, Newer United Express CRJ200 with one of the newer liveries, I'd more than appreciate it. But, oh well, the Battleship Gray will work just as well for now. Just pretend it's like a retro livery. Alright, we'll start off at the front. You got the cockpit window, the L1 boarding door, the United Express titles up on top. You got the blue winglet, then you have the very dark blue engines, and then the iconic United Tulip with a blue striped background. It's like a blue background and you have like dark blue or black stripes going across the entire tail and then you also have like the darker color on the bottom which that might be like a very dark blue yeah it is very dark blue it kind of appears black sometimes depending on what you look at it during the day but yeah um very nice model and i definitely would recommend this if you can't find the continental globe i only got it because well easy toys did not have the um, Continental Globe CRJ200 in the 1400 releases. They only had it in the 1200, which I don't need the 1200s for obvious reasons. But other than that, I think it'll work as a great model for a lot of my airports that I have, um, like Joe Foss Field and Skippy Town. Um, yeah, other than that, I think that's about it. So we'll move on to our second model. Our second model that we have to unbox is the Spirit Airlines Airbus A319 with the grayscale livery. This is the one from like the 2000s or so. And it's um, an Aero Classics release as well, our only um, non-Gemini Jets model out of this batch. So um, pretty bland box on the front. You got the baby bus models, titles, 
um, picture of an A321 on the side, the entire A320 family flying with each other, A319 and A320 on this side. On the top, you've got the warning for small parts and whatnot. And then on the bottom, you have the info about the aircraft, and it also gives you the registration right away. So there you go. I might have seen this one at Minneapolis at some point, or some of the other airports that I've done spotting at. No flap, so we'll just open it up. So this will be my first Spirit model, because they're so dang hard to find wherever I look. But I don't think Spirit has any more of the grayscales flying. I might be wrong, so correct me on that if that's the case. But I think it's a nice livery. Ooh, looks pretty. All right, we got our baby bus. Start off, we got the white nose over here, the cockpit window, the O on boarding door, and then you got the spear titles, and you have the S that's in a red square, and then the rest are in the black or dark gray squares. And the same effect applies out on the tail. And then you got the, I believe that says spirit, spiritair.com there on the engine. And then the decal right there, it says, looks like Spirit of the Americas, and then you got a tiny Airbus A319 um, logo underneath it. So pretty good livery. I do like the gray scale. I don't think I've seen this. Maybe I saw once when I took my first visit to Minneapolis in 2018. But yeah, I don't know. But like I said earlier, there might not be any more of these gray scales flying around because I think Spirit has now repainted all their aircraft into the banana livery, um, as, like, as some people like to call it, or the taxi cab, because it kind of looks like a taxi cab as well from New York City. Um, and then on the bottom, no, um, no logo for the model manufacturer, which I like. Makes it look more realistic. But other than that, I think this will work for Skippy Town. So yeah, Spirit Airlines, new airline for Skippy Town. Um, one daily flights to Las Vegas for them. Um, yep, other than that, I think that's about it for this model. We'll move on to the third model. Okay, our third model is this United Express Embraer ERJ-175. I'm happy I finally got this model because with the last massive unboxing, I did order this model, but they did not send it to us. So, yeah, when I took the opportunity to order more models, I put this on the list, and they did send it. So there it is inside. I bet you the wings are going to look ridiculous on it because I've seen that video and I'm sure most of you know what video I'm talking about if you've seen it. So there's the pamphlet with the aircraft info up there. Down the back, a 2019 release and it's got the updated box art on the back. Still got the animated plane and then all their socials and info about their brand. And then, um, yeah, an item number again. Yes, I know, I always forget the first one. Um, the first one for the United CRJ200, that was GJUAL1633. And the Aero Classics, I won't read the Aero Classics brand number, I'm more used to reading the Gemini Jets brand item numbers. Um, this one's GJUAL1889. So, we'll see how horrendous the wings look. Um, maybe by this point most of you guys have figured out what video I was talking about just about a minute ago. Oh boy, he's for the love of God. Yeah, I can already see the wings. They already look horrendous. Okay, yep. Yep, the very high elevated wings. You can already see them. Okay, um, just ignore the wings for now. Just pretend that, that, that it doesn't look like that. So we have the cockpit windows, the connecting people uniting the world titles, the L1 boarding door, the United Express titles, and you got the wavy Dreamliner-esque blue line that goes across the length of the fuselage. There's a registration, November 605 Uniform X-Ray. I believe this is the first ERJ-175 to get the new livery. And then you have the new Evolution Globe. And, and I mean, look at the wings, too. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, the wings are so much higher. I don't have another um, ERJ-175 to compare it to, but I know if you've seen that video... You just know how horrendous the wings look, but I guess it'd work if you have it in flight because, you know, the wings do bend like that, but if it's on the ground, it just looks ridiculous. But other than that, I have no complaints about this model. You know, it's not broken, so I won't complain too much. Um, yeah, we'll move on to our fourth model. 
Okay, our fourth model is this JetBlue Airbus A321neo. I'm a little bit concerned about this one because I know the I've had a bad history with the A321neo mold with either broken wings or terrible engines, the latter of which is more common than the other. Open it up. Looks good so far. Um, aircraft info on the pamphlet there. And then on the back, a 2019 release, relatively new. And then, yeah, other than that, pretty generic Gemini Jets box. You, you know the drill at this point. And then GJJBU1881 is the item number. So hopefully this isn't broken. I swear to God, if it is, I'm going to be mad. But it looks like the wings are glued in just fine, so maybe I don't have much to worry about. Okay. Uh -oh. oh, come on! Are you got you got to be kidding me? Seriously? Look at that! The wing just literally fell out. Look at that crap! What the heck? The camera will even focus on that. Look at that. <sighs> well, I guess he won't be getting a review because it's broken, so I'm going to put that off to the side. Yep. Oh my god, the other wing just fell out too. Yep. Exactly like the Virgin America A321neo unboxing that I filmed about two years ago. God, this is, this is a great model too. God. You have got to be kidding me. Absolutely ridiculous. See, I knew the A321neo mold was absolutely horrible. I've had this exact issue before. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I am shaking right now with frustration and anger, but I'm trying not to get aggressive because I want to keep this PG and as family-friendly as possible, so... God... Look at that. Wow. Yep. I mean, this is the quality you expect from Gemini Jets these days, so why am I surprised in the first place? So, I'm not even going to review this model because this is absolutely disgusting. Lack of effort by Gemini Jets on this one, unfortunately. So, this doesn't even deserve a review in this video, so I'm just going to move on and pretend that this model didn't even exist. <sighs> so, give me a few minutes. I'm going to try and get this super glue and I'll come right back. Okay, so with the absolute mess that was the JetBlue Neo, um, we'll move over to the US Airways Airbus A319 Piedmont Retro. This is a much older model, so I hope this one isn't, isn't broken. So there's no like air in aircraft info in the pamphlet. It's just the U.S. Airways logo, and I do love the box art in this one. This one I have to give Gemini Jets credit for. They did really well in the box art. I'm not sure this is the case for all of the U.S. Airways um, heritage aircraft. I'm sure it was. I'm still shaking, so apologies if I mess up on some words. But no uh, release year on here, so I don't know when when it was released. If anyone knows, um, please leave a comment. But I will definitely, I'd definitely like to hear when this is released, but the item number GJPDM682, so that might give you some clues. Yeah, box art, really good. I have to put the box for this one. I only got this just because I wanted more um, heritage aircraft. I know this isn't the most realistic, just kind of like with the United CRJ200 um, Battleship Gray, but... Okay, it's a very tight box too, good lord. Okay. Oh, this is tight. All right, we got that off. There you go. Looks pretty good. At least this one's the older mold, so this will have the correct size CFM engines. All right, so start off at the front. We got the cockpit windows, the L1 boarding door, and yes, you can probably see my hands are shaking. I'm still upset about the JetBlue, um, the US Airways titles, and you got the blue cheat line, the Piedmont logo, and then the A319 um, titles underneath, because I think that's what Piedmont used to do 
on, I think they're 737s. They used to put the aircraft name on the bottom of the tail along with those four stripes that go, go across the... Actually, no, that's three stripes, sorry. Um, is it three? Yeah, it's three. Three stripes, excluding the red one, goes across the entire tail, and then you got the registration. This obviously is now flying for American, so it's pretty much the same thing, minus the US Airways titles, just now swapped out for the American titles. And then you got the blue wingtip fence, and the gray engines, the gray underbody. So yeah, very nice livery, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of getting this one. Um, so yeah, I do like to... Um, Actually, no, I don't want to apologize for Gemini Jets' lack of effort because I had, I played no part in building that model, obviously. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this massive unboxing. Um, again, I'm getting the JetBlue Neo glued in, so I have it, I have it in another room in my house where it's getting fixed. So hopefully, um, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the unboxing video other than the mess that was the JetBlue E321 Neo. So thanks for watching. And I will catch you in the next video. Also, make sure to stay tuned for another Joe Foss update coming out on Friday, April 10th. So, see you then. This one, I've got high concerns because I've seen somebody unbox this and it came broken. Plus, the 321 Neo has had a history of being broken with me.